Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was, John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, it was um, <clears throat> second Sunday in Advent in 1997, 20 years ago, that I found myself at the very place where Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem, in the church of the Nativity, at a shrine, a little grotto type thing in the, in the uh, in the church. I was on a pilgrimage with a group of 24 priests from across the United States. And that was a very thrilling, thrilling moment to actually be there at that spot. And afterwards, we went to the sacristy of the church so that we could prepare to concelebrate the Mass for the second Sunday in Advent. And we began to look for the, the violet vestments and the readings that you've just heard and could not find them. And uh, eventually the sacristan showed up. He was a man who spoke six languages, but English was not one of them. And we found some common ground in French. And when he found out what we wanted, he shook his head at us like we were a bunch of stupid school children and said, no, 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 ici, c'est toujours Noël. In this place, it's always Christmas. You could go there any day of the year. You'd go there on Easter Sunday, uh, Fourth of July, All Souls Day, but you didn't celebrate those days. You only celebrated Christmas in that church, 365 days a year. And I remember thinking, isn't it nice that there's at least one place in the world where every day is Christmas? A lot of kids would be thrilled with that idea. Every day is Christmas. Well, I look back now uh, at that experience from the vantage point of 20 years later, this past week, preparing my thoughts for this homily, and it came, it struck, so a thought occurred to me that that church in Bethlehem is it may be not so unusual. It could be said that any church in any town, you could say it's always Christmas, or at least it could always be Christmas in this sense that <coughs> Christmas is, is welcoming Christ, welcoming Jesus. That's the message of Christmas. Jesus comes, we go, and we recognize him, and we welcome him, we pay him homage. He is the, he is the heart of Christmas, Jesus. And therefore, when we welcome Christ, we are celebrating Christmas. Here's what the church um, prays for on this second Sunday of Advent, our opening prayer we heard a minute ago. We want the Lord to help us to be able to recognize and welcome Christ. And I want to suggest to you that there's two ways to do that, both ways that come from the example of the Blessed Mother in the Scriptures, both from Luke's Gospel. Luke says that... Um, 
after the wise men had gone home and the shepherds had gone home from the stable, Mary, I give you the exact words, Mary treasured these things and reflected on them in her heart. And my advice is to do what Mary did. Reflect on the Christmas story. Take time to mell over this episode that changed human history forever. That God so loved the world, in the words of John, that he sent his only son so that whoever believes in him might have eternal life. Ponder the fact that God, who could have redeemed us by whispering a word or coming on the clouds in glory, chose instead to take on human flesh, to become what we are, to experience our fragile, broken human existence, to die our death. It's amazing when you think of it. Second thought, also from Luke's Gospel. When Mary learned that she was going to be the mother of Jesus, the first thing she did, according to Luke, she rose and went with haste into the hill country to a town of Judah where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. Mary learns from the angel Gabriel that Elizabeth, her cousin, who was advanced in years, is now expecting a child, and she's in her sixth month. And so she goes with haste. Scriptures make it a point that she went in a hurry, a distance of 70 miles, not to spread her own good news, not, not to talk about her own fortune, but to be there for Elizabeth, who obviously needs someone. That's how she prepared for Christmas. She went out of her way to tend to the needs of someone who needed her. And, and my hunch is that you would not have difficulty identifying someone who needs from you something similar to what Elizabeth needed from Mary, someone who is, someone who is hurting, someone who is sick, someone who is depressed, someone who is finding it difficult to be joyful at this time of year because life has been hard or even cruel. One of my favorite quotations in this regard comes not from the scriptures, but from a woman who was a Catholic author, notably Catholic. I'm talking about Flannery O'Connor, a Southern woman. And she wrote a lot of short stories, good short stories. You always find it Catholic, you can tell she's Catholic, there's Catholic themes in them. And uh, she died uh, at the age of 39 uh, after a good period of suffering. And in the midst of her suffering, she wrote these words. She said, you will have found Christ when you are concerned with other people's sufferings and not your own. Boy, we want to take a three by five card and write that and put that on the mirror in the bathroom so you see that every morning. <laughs> you will have found Christ when you are concerned with other people's sufferings and not your own. And that's why I say it, it is true, or it can be true, as true for uh, Amherst as it is for Bethlehem, what that French sacristan said 20 years ago, ici c'est toujours Noël, in this place it's always Christmas, or rather it can be Christmas, 365 days a year. Christmas is when you have found Christ, and you have found Christ when you are concerned with other people's sufferings and not your own. 